Hello everyone. So the Queen has just summoned the head of the army and the air force and they have a new plan now about what they're going to do to catch these giants. Um, so hopefully you had a little think about what that plan might be. The head of the army and the head of the air force stood at attention beside the Queen's breakfast table. Sophie was still in her seat and the BFG was still high up on his crazy perch. It took the Queen only five minutes to explain the situation to the military men. I knew there was something like this going on, Your Majesty, the head of the army said. For the last ten years, we have been getting reports from nearly every country in the world about people disappearing mysteriously in the night. We had one only the other day from Panama. For the hearty taste, cried the BFG. And one from Wellington in New Zealand, said the head of the army. For the booty flavour, cried BFG. What is he talking about, said the head of the Air Force. Work it out for yourself, the Queen said. What time is it? 10am. In eight hours, those nine bloodthirsty brutes will be galloping off to gobble up another dozen, a couple of dozen of unfortunate wretches. They have to be stopped. We must act fast. Well, bomb the blighters, shouted the BFG, shouted the head of the Air Force. We'll mow them down with machine guns, cried the head of the army. I do not approve of murder, the Queen said. But they are murderers themselves, cried the head of the army. That is no reason why we should follow their example, the Queen said. Two wrongs don't make a right. And two rights don't make a link, cried the BFG. We must bring them back alive, the Queen said. How? The two military men said together. They are all fifty feet high. They'd knock us down like nine pins. Wait, cried the BFG. Hold your horse, Blythe. Keep your skirts on. I think I has the answer to the maiden's hair. Let him speak, the Queen said. Every afternoon, the BFG said. All these giants is in the land of Noddy. I can't understand a word this fellow's saying, said the head, the head of the army snapped. Why doesn't he speak clearly? He means the land of Nod, Sophie said. It's pretty obvious. Exactly, cried the BFG. Every afternoon all these nine giants is lying on the ground, snoozling away in a very deep sleep. They is always resting like that before they is galloping off to guzzle another helping of human beings. Go on, they said, so what? So what you soldiers has to do is to creep up to the giants while they are still in the land of Noddy and tie their arms and legs with mighty ropes and wonking chains. Brilliant, the queen said. That's all very well, said the head of the army, but how do we get these brutes back here? We can't load 50 foot giants onto trucks. Shoot them on the spot, that's what I say. The BFG looked down from his lofty perch and said, this time to the head of the air force, he was having billy poppers, is you not? Is he being rude? The head of the air force said. He means helicopters, Sophie told them. Then why doesn't he say so? Of course we have helicopters. <gasps> Whoops, he did, belly boppers, asked the BFG. Very big ones, said the head of the Air Force proudly. But no helicopter is big enough to get a giant like that inside it. You do not put him inside, the BFG said. You sling him underneath the belly of your belly popper and carry him like a portino. Like a what? said the head of the Air Force. Like a torpedo, Sophie said. Could you do that, Air Marshal? The Queen asked. Well, I suppose we could, the head of the Air Force admitted grudgingly. Then get cracking, the Queen said. You'll need nine helicopters, one for each giant. Where is this place? The, the Air Force man said to the BFG. I presume you can pinpoint it on a map. Pinpoint, said the BFG. Map? I is never hearing these words before. Is this Air Force been talking slugsh, Bunkle? The Air Marshal's face turned the colour of ripe plum. He was not used to being told he was talking slush bungle. The Queen, with her usual admirable tact and good sense, came to the rescue. BFG, she said, can you tell us more or less where this giant 
giant country it is. No, Magister, the BFG said. Not on my nelly. Then we're jiggered, cried the air army general. This is ridiculous, cried the air marshal. You must not be giving up so easy, the BFG said calmly. First itchy Bob Stinkle, you, me, and you begin shouting you as Biff Squinkled. The army general was no more used to being insulted than the air marshal. His face began to swell with fury and his cheeks blew out until they looked like two huge ripe tomatoes. Your majesty, he cried, we are dealing with a lunatic. I want nothing more to do with this ridiculous operation. The queen, who was used to the tantrums of her senior officials, ignored him completely. Yes, dear, she said, would you please tell these rather dim-witted characters exactly what to do? A pleasure, Magister, said the BFG. Now listen to me carefully, you two boot -bogners. The military men began to twitch, but they stayed put. I is not having the foggy side here where a giant country is in the world, the BFG said, but I is always able to gallop there. I is galloping forwards and backwards from giant country every night to blow my dreams into little chitless bedrooms. I is knowing the way very well. So all you have to do is this. Put your nine big belly poppers up in the air and let them follow me as I is galloping along. How long will the journey take? The Queen asked. If we're leaving now, the PFG said, we will be arriving just as the giants is having their afternoon snozzle. Splendid, the Queen said the Queen. Then turning to the other to the two military men, she said, Prepare to leave immediately. The head of the army, who was feeling pretty miffed by the whole business, said, That's all very well, your Majesty, but what are we going to do with the blighters once we get them back here? Don't worry about that, the Queen told him. We'll be ready for them. Hurry up now, if you go. If it pleases your Majesty, Sophie said, I should like to ride with the BFG to keep him company. Where will you sit? asked the Queen. In his ear, Sophie said. Show them, BFG. The BFG got down from his high chair. He picked Sophie up in his fingers. He swiveled his huge right ear until it was parallel with the ground. Then he placed Sophie gently inside it. The heads of the army and the air force stood there good boggling. The Queen smiled. You really are rather a wonderful giant, she said. Magister, the BFG said, I is wishing to ask a very special thing from you. What is it? the Queen said. Could I please bring back here in the belly poppers all my collection of dreams? They is taking me years and years to collect and I'm not wanting to lose them. Why, of course, the Queen said, I wish you a safe journey. And off they go. So, can you think what um, they're going to do? Like, are they going to be able to get to Giant Country? Do you think they're going to be able to follow the BFG? Are they going to be able to tie up the giant without them waking up? And if they manage all of that, what are they going to do with them when they bring them back to England? Now, there's a very important lesson that we can learn in this chapter. Because the Queen does not want to kill those giants. Now, she says, um, two wrongs don't make a right. Has someone done some, does something to you? If you do the same back to them, then it means you're just as bad as them. So if the Queen or the Air Force or the Army killed the giants, then they would also be murderers. So I think that's a good one to think about. Two wrongs don't make a right. If someone hurts you, should you hurt them back? OK, if someone has done a crime or they've murdered someone, should they then be killed or 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 not? What could they do instead of killing them? Or what, what what are they going to do? I really, really don't know. And where is the where is the BFG going to keep all of his dreams? And where is he going to live? Because it sounds like he's not going back to live in giant country because he's not going to be eating any more snoz cumbers. And he's bringing his dreams with him. So it looks like he's moving house. Um, another lesson we can learn here 
that the BFG taught us was not to give up too easily. The two men were almost going to give up on the whole plan, but the BFG was thinking, 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 and he came up with another plan so that they didn't have to give up. So once you reach an obstacle or a difficulty, you keep thinking, you keep trying, and you don't give up. All right, the next chapter is called Capture. So I'll see you next time.